Welcome back to Once Upon a Tiny Farm, where I've just found out that we have a deer problem. We got some fresh deer droppings right here in this row. An apple from my apple tree. I'm gonna have to figure out a way to set up to get this guy. There's stuff like this, where the tops are completely eaten off of these fully grown lettuces right here. I did not do that. I did not do this. <laughs> I would make a nice cleaner cut than that. Um, deer are coming in here and eating all the stuff that I'm trying to grow. And I uh, I was thinking about crying about it, but now I'm just laughing because it's just ridiculous. I have these rows here. Yeah, they've got overgrown with weeds, but <laughs> I planted corn here twice. And I was wondering why it didn't come up here but it came up all over here in this big area. And now I realize that it's because deer have been here. These are a row of Jerusalem artichokes. Those got really tall. They're in the sunflower family. Um, they've all been topped. They've been eaten. The top of these have been eaten. That's not a huge deal, <laughs> but uh, it's annoying nonetheless. Um, now I, I, I realize why these outer rows haven't um, germinated anything that I planted. And the stuff that has germinated, like this corn here, look how tall this corn is here. There's a variety called Lancaster Shore Crop. Um, I grew these for my chickens. Um, not for the deer. But what I learned about deer is, you notice something funny, there should be tassels on top to help pollinate the ears down below. And there are no tassels up top, and there are no ears to be found down below. And what I found out about deer is they like to eat the silks, the baby silks, as the cobs are starting to form. And they like to eat the tassels as they're starting to form up top. So they all got eaten when they were obviously at a lower level. And now this is just growing with no corn. <laughs> I have no corn like anywhere in this field. There's no tassels. There's no corn on the cob. There's no cobs. There's no, no, there's no corn. I've literally just been feeding the local deer population and it's probably been going on for a long time. And a lot of things that I've blamed in the past on rabbits, I think I should have been blaming on deer. So we spent two nice days at the beach and came back home. Uh, it was a little bit after 11 p.m. at night. We were pulling into our driveway and I looked over at my field where all my farm crops are and saw a huge deer just standing there staring at us as we, <laughs> we stopped the car. The lights were shining right on it. And um, I was a little surprised. I could tell the deer was a little surprised because I think the deer have been here for months. I don't know how many there are, if it's just one or a family of them, but I took a walk around my farm plot over there to see the damage and it's it's not pretty. Dang. Yeah, they were chowing down here. Well, apparently they don't care for celery. Oh, there you go. Maybe I should just grow a whole row of celery. <laughs> I don't know. It looks like they enjoyed some of the celery here too. Yeah, they bit the tops off of that. Okay. I finally got two good rows of carrots germinated. Yeah. Can't just have good things. I have to have deer, deer tracks walking through my one nicely germinated row of carrots. They're just coming out here and eating everything that I have not just I thought it was just on the outsides of the property but now they're coming in to my inner rows and something needs to be done here because I'm getting really pissed off another thing I've noticed since I realized the deer have been coming all the way up here to the front of the farm where my apple trees are this deer was very tall and I have a feeling we had a way more apples on this tree and I think the deer have just been coming and munching there's like no apples on any of these branches here and uh, that really really pisses me off because it took me a really long time to get these to start producing apples that's a Macintosh tree this one's a Honeycrisp they're starting to ripen a bit but there was way more apples on this tree 
and I think I'm gonna have to hide out here and maybe tackle the uh, deer with my bare hands tonight. <laughs> the only thing that really hasn't been eaten is the stuff that I have under this um, shade cloth here. Um, <laughs> And surprisingly, this stuff's still here. It's not under the shade cloth. Everything that wasn't under the shade cloth over here, eaten, eaten. I have two rows of carrots over there. The tops are all eaten. Now, the one and only place where we haven't had much pest pressure has been right out, fried, out, out front of our house, our little 400 square foot garden here. Yet, this morning, I come out and some of these really nice Heads of lettuce I have here have been eaten down to the base. Eaten down to the base. Eaten down to the base. Crunched on down to the base. Now, uh, over here too. Unbelievable. Over here. Uh, back here. Unreal. It just feels like I can't get anything to grow and the stuff that I do get to grow is just getting eaten. I've never had pest pressure like this before. Now this could be the, we have a groundhog or two that have been wandering around our property. I took a shot with my, with my bow the other day and I just missed it. And, um, but that's just another thing that could be a groundhog eating this, but it could also, I wonder if the deer have made their way all the way from over there to here in front of our house. I, I dare them to do it if they if I catch them they're <laughs> they're toast and it's not like I haven't had enough issues already this year it's been so hot that things have just been struggling to grow um, I have to constantly irrigate and it just seems like it's not enough things aren't germinating because it's been too dry and too hot and I've been burned out from working in the heat and just having a really hard time to grow I've had a hard time with weed pressure has been insane this year um, some of that I think falls on me because I haven't added enough compost and new soil to these beds and I just haven't stayed on top of weeding. But now this is a new thing. Um, I've never had, we've never had deer here uh, as far as I know, not on our property. But it seems like at least this year I have invited them in with my nice little patch of corn back there that I grew in fact for my chickens, not for the local deer population. I am still really frustrated by all this because I've worked really, really hard to uh, have a good plan to show up at market each week uh, with with my produce and it just feels like I keep hitting like a brick wall no matter what I do so uh, it's just another problem I'm gonna have to figure out and solve I guess it's gonna have to be fencing deer fencing all the way around or eliminate the deer um, altogether another deer track deer track deer track yeah, it's just making its way up my my only nice looking rows of carrots right now unbelievable if anybody's got advice for me um let me know down in the comments how you handle this deer problem obviously i'm thinking uh deer fencing would be the first thing to do at least for me deer fencing this front half here is where i grow all my market crops and i notice the only ones that are safe are the ones that have been under the shade cloth so if I had anything under a covering maybe they will do better and that's a plan that I do have is to order I am planning to order um, low tunnels to cover all of my rows here so maybe that itself will deter the or at least not allow the deer to get in to eat what's beneath when everything's covered but give me some of your advice if you've dealt with uh, deer problems like this in the garden um, and let me know because it's a new problem for me and obviously I want to eliminate the deer um, but um, yeah, just give me some of your advice. I'd really appreciate it uh, down in the comments. But uh, that's all I have for this video. Thank you all for watching. And uh, subscribe to our channel if you're new here. Really appreciate that too. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.